In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Back to your program, Treasures. And we will start commenting on the letter of St. Paul to Thessalonians. The first letter to Thessalonians. By the way, Thessalonian letters were the earliest letters written by St. Paul. It was known that he wrote this letter in the early 50 of the first century after like six months or like one year after visiting this country or this city in Greece and after um, proclaiming the good news to these people. And because of the persecution happened in this city, uh, they sent him their news and they were suffering a lot. That's why he wrote this letter. And a few weeks later, he wrote the second letter to Thessalonians to support their faith again and to explain points about the second coming of the Lord. When we speak about the first letter of Thessalonians at the first letter written by St. Paul, you can see clearly the style of his writing. St. Paul used to start saying his name in the first verses of the letter and then sending to these people and encouraging them and praying to God to thank God for their news and then going to the center of the letter or the core of the letter and in this special letter it was all about suffering and having hope in Christ and having hope in resurrection because these people were under trial, under persecution of the Roman Empire because they believed in Christ. So being Christian in that era, it was like a big problem for them. And they suffered a lot from both sides, from the Jew people and also from the Roman people. Paul, Silvanus and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonian in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He is sending the letter by his name and also by his, you know, co-workers, Silvanus and Timothy. Silvanus and Timothy were two disciples of St. Paul. They shared him the, uh, the journeys in, in Greece and in Europe later on, and they were very faithful to Christ and to St. Paul. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonian. By the way, by saying the church, it was not a building at that time. The church, it, it was like only the people of the country, of the city, who believed in Christ, who were baptized. So these people had no building of a church because at that time there was always persecution everywhere uh, upon Christian. To the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He is always mentioning the church in Christ. The church in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He's stating his Christian faith, the God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. If anyone asks why he is not mentioning the Holy Spirit, because he is sending the letter under the supervision of the Holy Spirit. He is inspired by the Holy Spirit. So he is not, you know, mentioning the Holy Spirit uh, all the time, but it, um, <clears throat> he will mention the Holy Spirit later on in the letter. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. As he used to send all the letters later on, he is always starting by saying grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without seething your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of our God and Father. Also, he used to give thanks to God when he sent to any of his people, but especially in this letter, because they suffered the persecution and they stood strongly against this persecution. They kept their faith, so he was happy with this and he was giving thanks to God always for them. 
And you know, when you give thanks to God and you relate this to the news of the people, it means that your love, your heart is full of love. You don't thank God just because your news are fine, but you thank God for the news of others. And having this strong faith, it was good for him to thank God for. Making mention of you in our prayers, this support them very much. When they see their father in spirit, the, the, the St. Paul himself, remembering them always in his prayers, they feel like they are important and they are beloved by him, so it helped them to stay strong in faith. Remembering without seeding your work of faith, labor of love and patience of hope. This is very important actually because he's mentioning in his first letter the three pillars of Christian faith. Christianity stood upon faith, love and hope. And the expression of faith is always about work. And the expression of love is always about labor. And the expression of hope always about patience. So when you believe in God, when you have faith, you have to work according to this faith, to prove your faith by your deeds. When you have love, you show your love by labor, not by words, not by emotions, but mainly by labor. And also when you have hope, you will have this patience waiting for God to reply your um, prayers and to make the good news always for yourself. Remembering without seeding your work of faith, labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. The core of everything is the Lord himself. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the reason behind our faith, is the source of our love, is the, is the center of our hope. So faith, love, and hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the sight of our God and Father. So he's always relating the Son to the Father, Christ to the Father God. Knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. And that's very much supporting to them when he mentioned that they were elected to be God's people. So they were chosen to be his people, the earliest people in Greece were the people of Thessalonians. Knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God, for our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance that you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. So he is recalling the start, the beginning of his uh, preaching in this city was with Power. He felt that these people accepted the faith in a powerful way. They were led by the Spirit. So it was not, you know, the power of Paul himself or how much strong in his preaching, but they accepted the faith in a powerful way. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power. So always remind yourself it's not the word itself, the sentence, the verse. It's the power of the Spirit behind the word. So when you believe in one of the verses given by God, it's not like just literally some words, but it's the power of God who proclaim the truth. And you believe in this and you get the power of the Spirit itself. The gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance. As you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. Also having this best model of Paul, Timothy, Silvanus, these good people were the perfect models before their eyes. So they could see clearly that the words given by these people were not like words but they were spiritual men who believed in Christ, who lived the real Christian life. That's why they looked up to them. They could follow them because of their good model. And you became followers of us and of the Lord. 
followers of us and of the Lord. And that's usually the discipleship of Christian life, that we follow our spiritual father who is following Christ himself. We are following the saints who we could see or we believe in them, and these saints follow Christ himself. So as beginners, we cannot see God clearly, but we can see God's people. And by following them, we follow Christ himself. You became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. So when they received the word of God, they were strongly persecuted, afflicted. They had hard time from their families and from the surroundings. So having this hard time, they stood still, they stood strong in faith. Um, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Spirit. So having the joy of the Spirit will support you in times of affliction. That's a spiritual rule in Christian life. That you can, you know, um, take the burden of any trial, of any affliction, if you have the power of the Spirit, if you have the joy of the Spirit. The internal joy will support you to, you know, carry the external burden. But if you don't have this joy in your heart, you cannot carry the burden of the problems around. Having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. So the whole area called Macedonia, Thessaloni, was the first or the most important city in this area. And Macedonia and Achaia, large areas, but you know the people of Thessaloni were the first people to believe in Christ. And from this point, the word of God spread to all the areas around. For from you, the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. So the good news made by them as good examples of early Christian, of the newcomers to faith, you know, because of their a very pure life and their strong faith and their uh, pure love and their strong hope because of all of this the good news you know spread everywhere not only to the nearby areas of Macedonia and Achaia but also everywhere in Greece your faith toward God has gone out so that we do not need to say anything for they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. So you know, when you speak good words about God, you need to support this uh, proclamation or this message by the real love life of good Christians. So being good Christians in this city, they could help to spread the, the good news everywhere because people could see the change in their lives and they looked up to them and they could see that the Christian life could be lived and it's a real miraculous life to have the power of the Spirit in your life. We do not need to say anything for they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you. So people were astonished. What did you do with these people? How come they changed that much? So the power of change is the real power of marketing the good news. Everyone were asking how these people could reach this level of purity and strong faith in this few months. That's why Paul was happy with these people because he could make use of this example to preach the word of God everywhere in Greece. And again, when he say, we do not need to say anything, just give the people a real good example of Christian life. You don't need to preach. You don't need to give sermons. You don't need to speak much. Just when they, the people look 
to this man or to this woman, they can see the whole Bible walking um, before their eyes. And how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. This means that most of these people were pagans and they worshipped idols and they could understand the real truth and they followed Christian life and they turned to God. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he, ra he raised from the dead. So he's mentioning the second coming of Christ, which means that before their baptism, they had this course of catechumen. And the people, the saints at that age, at that period of time, were always giving the good news and explaining the Christian creed or the Christian faith. And people, you know, believed in Christ as real God, in the Holy Trinity, in the redemption, in the power of baptism, in the picture of the new life, and also in the second coming of Christ. And the second coming of Christ is the hope for all Christians, especially for those who are under persecution and affliction. They're always waiting for the second coming of Christ and the start of their eternal life. To wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. So the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, who delivered us from wrath, from God's wrath to God's eternal happy life, he is the one who will come, God will come again to take his people to his eternal life. Glory to God. Amen.